Hello again, this is Skip McCauley, Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle with another rather exciting little project I did on the uh, old school type of uh, 1296 amplifier. This is what got me started on these new Nexteon displays was when I built this uh, big time DC load for testing power supplies etc. Right away I said to myself that these new Nexteon displays would look really cool instead of these old style four line LCD displays I've been using in all my projects. So I did some careful measurements to uh, see what size of display I could use and ordered two five inch brand new Nexteon displays. So in the meantime, waiting for the two five inch displays to show up, I began working on the uh, program for the display itself. Nexteon has a real nice program to create the displays is very similar to Visual Basic, I found. Uh, there is some bugs in it though, especially when using the serial line output of the computer instead of a display itself. I had already bought a seven inch display to uh, play with and learn how to program these things. So when I realized the computer simulation had a bug in it, I hooked up the uh, seven inch display and began building the evaluation boards for the pick part of the circuit. So with the 7 inch screen connected to the evaluation boards this is when the fun started and there there were some issues. So this is the boot up screen or the splash screen I call it showing that uh, it's representing the amplifier cavity A circuit of the 1296 uh, amplifier. This upper evaluation board is the pick circuit which takes the serial data in from the touch screen and gives me uh, various outputs. You can see a row of NPN transistors that will eventually go to different circuits for switching things on and off. The lower evaluation pick circuit is the, I guess we'll call the main pick circuit. And it, it takes all the different various sensors inputs and uh, it's where the serial data going out up to the display comes from. So to get things rolling here, we'll, uh, I'm using a, a pencil eraser for the touch on the screen and we'll uh, switch over to the main operational screen display. The temperature numbers are hard fixed numbers that are in the PIC circuit just to uh, give you something to show here on the screen for testing. To simulate the coolant flow meters, I'm using a function generator giving me a 12 hertz square wave into the uh, one sensor input of the pick. You'll see the flow meter pulse rate vary as I vary the frequency on the function generator. And uh, as I go lower in frequency, I'll, I'll go below a fixed set point and the sequencer disabled uh, scrolling marquee at the top will, will change colors and uh, tell me I'm in a disabled mode. This next screen is showing the individual tube temperatures which again are fixed numbers in the PIC circuit for testing. The third page or display is uh, where all the set points are set and are adjustable plus the uh, buttons for turning fans and pumps on and off. This adjustable set point is the temperature point where the cooling fan on the radiators will come on to uh, keep the temperature down. This one is showing the set point for the uh, flow meter alarm to be triggered. Um, all these set points are adjustable like this, can be, up, can be going up and down and uh, saved to EEPROM. This is a much easier system to adjust than it was with the LCD displays on the old system. Of course these buttons are pretty self-explanatory for turning fans on and off, the, the water pumps on and off. And over to the right you can see the uh, LEDs which were representing the outputs of the PIC circuit which will eventually go to relays and uh, control things that way. And last but not least is uh, saving the set points to EEPROM by pushing this button. The next screen is uh, what I call diagnostics and it's going to show me the individual plate current for each tube in this cavity. The serial data coming in for this display is from an external source so there is, a, there is going to be a serial switch. I have another evaluation board here that's uh, simulating the uh, data being sent. By pushing that button on the uh, simulator board for the play card I can see the numbers change uh, just to tell that it's working and good for a test. 
Then there's a, another button on this same screen to uh, put the whole system into transmit. So you can see these display current display and uh, you see the LED on the pick board there go on and off as I push it. So that's about it. With all that tested, I take my pointer and step back through the screens to the uh, main one. One more push on one of the invisible hot points and uh, we're back to the main uh, splash screen or the boot up screen. So with all that tested, it was uh, pretty well good to go. On to the next stage. So with all that testing, the uh, individual pick circuits were proven. So I had to build some circuit boards for the final result. So as I've shown before in my, uh, my circuit board process, uh, shown one board being etched here in the uh, vertical bubbling tank. There's uh, four boards all told going to be made two for each cavity, and uh, the boards were then cut out, drilled, and populated with the parts. So by the time I got all that done, the uh, new displays had shown up from China. It was uh, perfect timing, I couldn't believe it. These little displays are just sweet. They come well packed in a box, come with a connecting cable, and even a little uh, circuit board to plug in the end, so you can plug it into a USB port for power if you want. Well, the time had arrived. It was now or never. Time to pull the old shelf out and strip it down. First thing was getting everything disconnected. There's a lot of interconnecting cables between this control shelf and the rest of the amplifier. That uh, lower terminal strip there is where I already pulled some wires off and ran long extensions over to the uh, pick board for using the actual temperature sensors. So with all the interconnecting cables pulled off and disconnected, I could pull the shelf out of the rack. The cable that never ends. Next was the nasty part. Uh, tearing all the old parts off the front panel and um, get it ready for the new displays. The bicolor LEDs on the front panel were easy to come off the uh, boards just unplugged and the LEDs were actually just siliconed into the holes. Next was the old four-line LCD displays. With all that taken off, uh, the front panel itself could come off. Just a few bolts and screws and off she came. Lots and lots of wires, which I gave up trying to keep track of. And then the two uh, old control pick boards themselves, which are no longer being used. The center one is a sequencer board and it's still being used. Now the fun part, getting this all back together and working. Because I didn't have enough room in the uh, chassis to stack these four boards side by side, they uh, stacked on top of each other. The top board was the serial data coming in from the display, which controlled things, and then the lower board was the main, main pick that uh, does all the processing. It took some positioning and figuring out, but uh, I got the boards bolted down. And uh, next on the agenda was getting the new Nexteon displays mounted in the old panel. That took some doing. I needed to build some kind of mounting bezel for the two, dis two five inch displays. I took some eighth inch aluminum and cut out a square frame and uh, carefully filed the angles and slopes to make it look sort of pretty. And flipped it over and bolted, or I should say, cemented on four small bolts that the uh, circuit boards of the display themselves will bolt to the back of these mounting bezels. Then some fine sanding, a little bit of spray paint, and uh, they turned out pretty nice. 
the uh, displays fit right onto them perfectly and the four holes is what's going to mount them to the uh, front panel. This is a view of the two displays mounted in from the back side and then uh, what it looks like from the front. So to save some time I jumped at here a bit. Uh, I finally got it all wired together, got everything all figured out and uh, powered it up. Uh, believe it or not, uh, things look pretty good. If you're wondering what the big Variac is for, it's what I control the RF drive to the big amplifier with. It um, controls the voltage going to the transformer of the single tube amplifier in the transverter, which is the driver circuit. This is with both displays lit up. It sure looks a lot better than the old fashioned four line LCDs and a lot easier to read. Of course, uh, display on the left is for cavity A and uh, one on the right is for cavity B. Again, it was time for testing and more testing. I didn't want to slide this thing back into the rack and hook up all those wires just to find out that something didn't work, so I wanted to hook everything up to the sensors. So I ran these cables from the back terminal strips uh, down off the little workbench here along the floor to the back of the racks. These cables run along to the floor up to the rack where the junction point would be, which connect to 11 different Dallas type temperature sensors. Had the wires go up to a couple of old terminal strips, which made the junction point to the uh, wires on the rack itself. If you look farther in the back of the amp, on top of those two white blocks, you can see the individual Dallas temperature sensors that monitor the water line for each tube. Back to the front panels to uh, check it again. The temperature sensors are now working off the actual Dallas type temperature sensors. And uh, also going to check the flow meter rate input and make sure that uh, the uh, sequencing is switched on and off. You'll also see the sequence enable LED change from green to red as uh, I vary the flow meter rate going into the circuit. Did some relay activation checking and uh, these two videos are not synchronized by no means. But it gives you the idea of just what's going on. There's one more modification that has to be done before I can put everything back together. In order to display the eight separate plate currents in the new displays, uh, this data is coming from a different source in the amplifier. So the uh, bar graph display has to be removed. There's a pick in there which processes the individual currents and sends it out right now as RS-232 to the Visual Basics display on the computer. I have to add a couple of wires of this so I can have TTL data heading out towards the uh, new Nexteon displays into its uh, serial switch. With the amp being able to pull out on its slides and the bar graph has a separate module altogether, it's uh, fairly easy to remove. Out it comes, nothing to it, nice and easy. So this is the bar graph unit. Uh, flip it over and take the cover over the section that holds the uh, PIC microprocessor. This is a pretty simple and straightforward PIC circuit. It uh, uses eight analog input ports each which measures a voltage drop across a precision resistor in the uh, cathode circuit of the, of the tube amplifier on each tube. I simply have to add two wires off two unused ports over to the DB9 connector and then uh, change the code a little bit so it'll send out this TTL data for the next John display. So finally it's all finished and everything's back in the rack and all wired up. So this is what it looks like, all mounted and turned on. It's hard to get a decent picture of the displays. So I'm going to try my darndest here to show you how it works. Next is a brief little video on the uh, 
starting up of things and we'll work our way into transmitting a bit of a signal. The control shelf is turned on first, which you can see as the displays light up, and then uh, down to the main power supplies. The uh, main 12 volt DC circuits on the two high voltage power supplies are switched on first and then the uh, 12 volt circuit on the amplifier itself. Before any of the AC primaries are turned on, the uh, next thing that has to be done first is uh, turn on the water pumps. The pump button is on both screens and they're more or less tied in parallel so it doesn't really matter which display you use. I quite often use display A as the primary one. With the pumps turned on, I go back to the main screen and you can see that the flow meter pulse rate now is around 24. Uh, the coolant flow is good and the uh, sequencer is enabled. The good uh, coolant flow on amplifier B is also good. Uh, they are separate pumps, so it's uh, nice to see that both are turned on and both sequencers are turned on or enabled. So with the uh, water coolant flowing nicely, back down to the uh, two high voltage power supplies and turn on the AC primaries. With the primary circuits turned on, the next step is to turn on the filament switches for all the tubes and the two separate cavity amplifiers. After all that, the uh, only thing that's left now is uh, getting a high voltage for the plate circuits turned on, which is on a time sequence to uh, give the filament a good warm-up time. But to save time, because this is getting kind of long, we're going to skip over that step. Back up at the control shelf, uh, the fans will turn on automatically, but uh, just for effect here, we're going to turn them on by hand, or manually. So now for a little bit of tube current to show the displays indicating that part of it. There's the eyelid current coming up and you can see the bottom of the bar graphs glowing slightly also. Then as I key it on and off, you'll see the uh, displays increase and the bar graphs go up and down also. And that's how it's done. Well, that just about wraps it up. This, uh, again, went on for too long, and I hope we weren't all too bored by it. So, thanks for watching, 73s.